Hello and welcome. Today we're going to learn how to read a terminal aerodrome forecast, otherwise known as a TAF. This video is brought to you by the New York Center Weather Service Unit. We are part of the National Weather Service working collaboratively with the FAA. So here's the TAF we'll be looking at today. This is a 30-hour TAF. There are 32 international airports across the country that have these 30-hour TAFs, while the rest you see will generally be for a 24-hour period. What we're looking at here is the most likely conditions, and ideally the TAF will be short, about six lines or less. So let's break down the TAF. The highlighted part here tells you the type of report. So in this case, it's a terminal aerodrome forecast. The next part is the International Civil Aviation Organization Station Identifier. So we're looking at the TAF for John F. Kennedy International Airport in Queens, New York. Next, you'll see the date and time of origin. So this TAF was issued on the 8th of the month at 11.32 Zulu. Following the time of origin, you'll see the valid period date and time also in Zulu. So the TAF is valid on the 8th from 12Z through the 9th at 18Z. Now in the first line of the text, you'll see the prevailing conditions at the time of issuance until the next group. So the wind here is from the southwest at 15 knots with gusts to 26 knots. Visibility is greater than six statute miles, and we have a few clouds at 5,000 feet. Remember, anything above six statute miles in visibility will be reported as P6SM. After the visibility is usually where you'd see any weather element, and in this case, we have none. Now you'll see different from groups. These alert you to changes in conditions that might affect aviation. So you might see a new group for a wind shift, to include gusts or changes in a flight category, or maybe even to introduce precipitation. So here we have from groups at 1, 6, and 13 Zulu, uh, just kind of decreasing the winds overnight and then increasing them again in the morning. Now what do we do when the TAFs get more complicated? One of the more common things you'll see is a tempo group. Tempos are used for any condition in wind, visibility, weather, or sky that are expected to be occasional and occur during less than half of the time period. So these are for high probability expectations. What you see here are the beginning and ending hours, so from 2 to 4Z on the 11th. And note that this particular tempo is for weather, so light rain that will be occasional. These tempo groups will never exceed 4 hours. Another group you might see is the Prob 30 group. This is the probability of occurrence of a thunderstorm or other precipitation event with its associated elements like wind visibility and sky as necessary. This indicates a 30% probability of it occurring. This does not include forecast of significant weather in the vicinity or non-convective low-level wind shear, so it won't include shear that occurs outside of a thunderstorm. This will also not be used in the first nine hours of the TAF, so when you see this, it's something that's used for events that are farther out in time. And finally, you might see low-level wind shear. This refers to a sufficient difference in wind speed, direction, or both within 2,000 feet above ground level and this can severely impact airlines because of limited vertical airspace for recovery. Low-level wind shear in an NWS TAF refers to only non-convective low-level wind shear, so that's wind shear that's not associated with thunderstorms, but rather with frontal passages, inversions, low-level jets, lee side mountain effects, sea breezes, things of that nature. Low-level wind shear will be included in TAFs on an as-needed basis to focus air crews' attention on low-level wind shear problems which currently exist or are expected. So in this example, at 2,000 feet above ground level, the wind is from the south at 35 knots. <laughs> Thanks for watching. For this and other aviation information, visit our website at www.weather.gov/cny.